Hello again, in this series we're making a fun sheep and this is a complete beginner's guide to Blender 2.8. In this particular episode we'll be looking at shading and lighting. So across the top here you'll notice that there are different workspaces and I'm going to take us to the shading workspace now. You'll notice that everything changes straight away and that we've actually got new windows as well. I'm not going to talk about these two windows for now. The main window I want to talk about is the shader editor here. We can actually get rid of other windows. You can move your cursor between the two windows. When the mouse changes to this double arrow, you can right click and join area. But you can only join similar sized areas. And you get this arrow and you move it to get rid of one area. If you want to bring out an area, you go right to the corner and pull across like this. This could be quite hazardous for beginners, especially when pulling out new windows because it gets quite awkward. I'm going to join those two back together and also get rid of this one, like that. It doesn't matter if you've got them sitting on the side, don't panic too much if they're in the way, just use these two windows. So at the moment everything's very white and I want to move this into the middle of my viewport by pressing shift middle mouse button to move it into position. Now we can start texturing everything. Do remember my screencast keys are down in the bottom left here. So at the moment everything in the scene is sharing this one material. So if I click on different items, well, in fact, that one didn't have one, but most of them are sharing material one. Some have no material at all. So let's start texturing some different areas. So for example, the grass, let's change that to a green color. So we go to the base color here. The principal shader can be quite intimidating at first, but the main thing, if you want to change the color is just here. And the shininess is this roughness thing here. So shininess, roughness are the two opposites. In this case would be making it more rough like this, more shiny with less. And you can click and drag these sliders across up and down. But for now, all I want to change is the base color. So let's change that to green. So I move over to green and move it to a darker shade about there, I think. And you'll notice that lots of items have changed. That's because they're sharing this material. So I'm going to call this material green. And I actually want to create some new materials for the different areas. So let's go for this base here, that I want to make a sort of dirty brown color, but it's got the green at the moment. I need to add a new material and I can do that with this new material button here. I click that and it's now got a new material. Let's call this brown and I'll change it to a brown color. So I'll move that across with my wheel into the sort of browny yellowy area and make it slightly darker to somewhere around there. So let's try and make a white material for my sheep. So let's click on the main body. At the moment, it's sharing that green material again. So let's create a new one and call this white. And it's already got a nice white color automatically. So that will do fine. Looks good, let's start on the other areas. So I'll start with this leg down here. So I'll start with the top of this leg, which I want the same white material as this one here. So I can now go down to here and this little arrow next to my label, I've got my white material. So I can make sure that these have the same material as the body of my sheep, which is white. And if at any point I'm on this white material and I want to change it, you can see that they share the same material and I can change it slightly if I want to, but I don't. So I'm gonna put that back to white. And that'd be the hue all the way back to zero and the value up to one, and it's bright white. If we click on the color again, there is different options you have for colors. There's hex, RGB and hue, saturation and value. And it seems to default at HSV at the moment. It used to default at RGB, but basically most people just move it around here and move up and down for the tone as needed. On RGB, if you want to go all the way back to white, you can just put them all to one again. So let's select these two with shift select and give them both a white material. Now that hasn't worked. It only changes for the active object, which is the one you selected last, which is slightly frustrating. If you want to copy a material from one object to another, let's say you've got lots of these, you would select all the ones that you want to copy to. So let's select all these and the one you want to copy from last with shift, that now becomes the active object and you press control L and then materials and now they'll all share the same material as the active object here. So let's texture one of his feet with a brown material. I don't want the same as the dirt here. It's gonna be slightly darker. So I'm gonna create a new one and this is gonna be dark brown. And let's change it to a dark brown, which is 
down here, but with a dark tone, somewhere around there, that's great. And I'll select all these three, and this one last, so it's the active object. You can see it becomes the active object because the color is the dark brown that I originally made it. Control L, and then materials. Control L, and then link the materials, and they're all linked. Let's give them a brown face. So I'm just gonna select the dark brown this time for the face, and we'll give them some weird pink colored lips. So I'll create a new one there. This one hasn't got a material at all, so I can just click new and call this pink. Change the color to pink, pinky purpley anyway. And lastly, the pupils. Again, this hasn't got a material, so I just click new and change them to black. And let's copy this one and then select this last one. Select my black, which I ought to rename black actually. And there we go, we've got a very simple Minecraft sheep. So that's the basic coloring in, but we haven't got any shading at the moment, it's a bit bland. So this would be a good time to talk about rendering and lighting. First of all, rendering. We've got our different modes up here. We've been to wireframe and solid, and now we're in what's called look dev. And this gives you a basic scene, and it lights it with this what's called an HDRI, or high dynamic range image. And it puts this big picture in the background, and the light bits will create light, and the dark bits won't. It's kind of faking that in look dev mode. Whereas if we go to rendered mode, which is the next tab along, it uses the background. Now we can't see the background. We have to go to world under this tab here, and it's using this color here, and you can actually see that in the background. So whatever you place into the background here, in terms of color, let's turn it to a slight bluey color or something, you can see that affecting the image. It's lighting the image in a very flat way because it's all the same color. Whereas the look dev mode is slightly varied because of the different light patches. You can plug a HDRI into your background to get the same results as the look dev, and it will in fact be slightly better as well because the look dev is doing it in a basic way. So this mode is a slightly more basic version of the rendering mode, to put it very simply. So there's rendered and there's the look dev. Now at the moment you won't notice much difference until we start playing around with the render settings. And I'm not going to go too deeply into that because it can be a bit confusing to start with. But what we are going to do is add a few lights. Now you might already have a light in the scene, but I accidentally, but I accidentally deleted mine. So I'm just going to quickly add one. So shift A and you should have already a point light. So shift A, add light down in the middle here and point. And of course that goes where my 3D cursor is. And I can grab this light and you can see the effects of this light on the object. Now a point light will just shine out light omnidirectionally, if that's a word. And in look dev mode, we can start to see the influence of that light. And let's have a look at rendered mode. We can see it with the background influence as well. You can easily change the type of light you're using by going to this little lighting panel here. And you've got your list of different lights across the top. You can quickly have a look at those. We've got sun, and you can point that in a direction with this yellow dot here. Spotlight, similar sort of thing, but as a spot. And this one has a radius and it's got the blend here, so the harshness of the outline of the spot. And then you have an area light, and you can resize this area light by pressing S to scale it up to light a larger area. The simplest of all the lights is the sun, so if you want to keep it nice and simple, it will just be a big light that shines from this direction, and you have the fewest settings here. The main thing is the color, the strength, and the softness. So you can see the softness there. If I bring it down and bring it up, you can see the change in the shadows. And three is its default. So that's the very basics of lighting, and we'll keep it on the sun lamp for now. But the other thing that's important when you're thinking about lighting and rendering is the actual render engine you use. So if I go to this render tab here, we can see right at the top we've got render engine, and at the moment we're on Eevee. There's two real options, there's Eevee and Cycles. I'm not going to go through Workbench. Eevee is the new Blender engine they've been talking about a lot for 2.8, and it's really fantastic, but it works very much like a game engine lighting, so it kind of fakes things. It's not as good as Cycles, if I click across the Cycles and go to Rendered Mode, because this is still Look Dev Mode, so it looks exactly the same, but if I go to Rendered Mode now, you can see all this sort of graininess in here, but the complexity of the shadows is much more detailed because it's what's called a ray tracing engine. 
The disadvantage is it takes much longer to render. As you probably notice, if I move around, it goes grainy and you can see my samples up here when I move it. And it has to work that render out, whereas Eevee, if I switch across to Eevee, you can see it's instant. So Eevee's really great for speed, Cycles is great for realism. Most people want to work in Eevee when they first start because it's quick and there's some fun effects you can get. But most of the time I'll render out in Cycles to get a better effect. My spinning sheet was actually rendered in Eevee for speed, so we'll stick to Eevee. The great thing is you can switch between the two. The only thing is that your lights might be slightly different in terms of power and effect. But all your textures, if I click on one of the textures and go back to object mode to see our textures. <laughs> Funnily enough, this one didn't have one. So I'll just turn that to white. They'll all be the same whether you go from Eevee or Cycles, which is really handy. You can use Eevee to set up your scene, then switch across to Cycles for that realism. So let's switch back to Eevee. Now I'm still in rendered mode, remember? If I go to look dev, it does look very different, but rendered mode is what we're actually going to achieve in the end. So in our render tab, we have lots of fun options and we need to tick them in order for them to have an effect. So ambient occlusion is a great one. If I tick on that and use the disclosure arrow, you probably won't notice much. If I tick on it, you can just see where his feet are. There's a bit more shadow. And ambient occlusion is the darkness in the crevices. So if I put that up, you'll see what I mean. And I can go fairly high with this. And you can see that shadow becoming darker in the contact areas. I'm gonna put that down a bit because I think that's a bit too much. So somewhere about there looks fine. There's other fun things like bloom. You can see that the bright areas have a bit of glare about them. I tend to use that very sparingly. There's also screen space reflections, which you might not notice much happening there because we haven't really got much to reflect, but you might see it around this brown area here and it's reflecting itself. And under here we have options for transparency if you want to use things like glass so you can tick the refraction as well. I'm not going to use that today because that's not the style I'm going for. And there's no point ticking things if you don't need them. They'll just increase your render times. Now what might be nice is soft shadows. If I tick on that, you can see the shadows going soft. But sometimes you get glitches. As you can see, as it's moving around, it might flicker if we animate our sheep. So you can turn that on or off. It's up to you. And there's ways of tidying up those sort of flickers, which again, I won't go into today. So the very last thing I'm going to do is set up what's called a three point lighting system. So with my sun lamp selected, I'm actually going to make, I'm actually going to make two other sun lamps. So I'll go roughly to top view, doesn't have to be precise. With my light selected, Shift D to duplicate and point it in. And Shift D to duplicate and point it in there. Now we have a three point lighting system. So there's three lights. I'll push this one to the front, so grab that in I think the X axis in this case. Yes, the X axis and push that forward. So with a three point lighting system, you tend to have a key light, a fill light and a backlight. And that's what mine are doing. This one's pointed in a weird direction though. We'll point that down. And it's a bit too bright at the moment. So we need to adjust the settings. I'll adjust this one in the lighting settings here. I'll bring that to a nice sort of yellowy color and I'll bring the strength down. The strength is just there. Bring that down to something like three and the key light, I'll bring that down to about seven and maybe give that a different color that can always look quite nice gives it a bit of vibrancy if you change the color of your lights and the back one i always like to use a blue backlight and i'll bring the strength down of that as well and now we've got a nice soft shaded good looking sheep now i have got a video about how to set up the spinning animations but that's fairly complicated but i will show you how to render out your image so you can post it on the internet or wherever you want to at the very top of our screen, we've got this render menu here and we can render our image. But before we do that, you'd think it would just render the image like this, but that's not the case. It looks through the camera. So if we press zero on our numpad this time, then we'll get the camera view and that's what's going to be rendered. So we want to be able to move this camera into position. If I press N, that will bring up this toolbar here and under view, scroll down just a touch there's view lock and lock camera to view. If I tick that, I can move the camera around in the same way that I move my viewport around. So somewhere around there looks good. Now it's possibly an idea to have a look at what cycles looks like in terms of the render. You might want to use that. You do need to make your lights brighter. Like I say, the difference is in the lighting, but the shadows are much nicer. 
Otherwise you can go across to Eevee and use that, but you can see there's sort of glitches in the shadows slightly. I think it might be nicer with soft shadows, so I'm going to change it to soft shadows down here. Yeah, that looks a bit nicer. I could possibly turn the ambient occlusion up a bit then as well. About there, that looks good. So we go up to our render tab here and press render image or F12 if you want the shortcut. That creates a new screen like this and instantly renders our image in one second. And we can save our image by going to image and then save. Once you've saved the image, you can close this window down and you'll get back to Blender. Now, some people have asked me to animate the sheep and things like that. I think that's beyond the scope of this tutorial at the moment, but do comment below if you have any suggestions and if enough people ask, then we can go through animation. Thanks for watching.